WSQ. It's time, it's time. You know it is time. For you. Time for you. All right, welcome to WSQ number 16. Today we're going to talk about non metals. Um, inert gases and semi-metals and really this is just an introduction to take a look at how do these things fit together how do these elements on the periodic table table differ from the metals that we discussed in WSQ 15 so uh, a couple objectives what are the properties of non-metals and inert gases and how are semi-metals useful and so again this is just a general overview uh, shouldn't take us very long first of all let's start by talking about the properties of non-metals um, Nonmetals are basically elements that lack most of the properties of a metal. <laughs> I know, very complicated um, <laughs> definition. Uh, but basically, if we look at the physical properties of metals, remember we would say metals have, they're shiny, they have luster, um, they're malleable and ductile, you can shape them into things, hammer them into objects and shapes, um, those types of attributes. Well, nonmetals are the opposite. Nonmetals are poor conductors of heat and electricity, where metals are good conductors. Okay? Nonmetals are dull instead of being shiny. Nonmetals are brittle instead of being malleable. And so you see that the attributes that make metals valuable and useful, nonmetals are in the opposite. They're kind of the opposite um, properties. Chemically speaking, okay, nonmetals are. Um, uh, reactive. They generally gain or share electrons pretty easily and this because this will come down to their number of valence electrons, the electrons that are in the outer shell of each atom. And so it allows them to gain, to take in, they're kind of greedy, um, or to share their electrons. They also have the ability to form compounds with other nonmetals pretty easily and so there's going to be some things we'll see a lot of um, the word that uh, one word you might want to write down and use is the word diatonic. So we'll see a lot of diatonic um, molecules and what that basically means, um, diatomic, I think I said tomic. Uh, diatomic molecules, those are molecules where you have like an oxygen that binds to an oxygen, okay, or a carbon that combines with a carbon. Two atoms of the same element that are combining together. And so we'll see that a lot when we get into bonding and talk about ionic and covalent bonds. Now, we can break nonmetals down, and ultimately, when we look at the nonmetals, it will be along this zigzag. Okay. I think I got it right here. Okay. All the nonmetals are these elements right here plus this one. So these are going to be the nonmetals. In your periodic table, oftentimes, um, wherever you're at, there'll be a different color. I think green or yellow or something to that effect. And so I think in this one, we're going to see them in the color light green. Now we can look at them by their families. So family 14 is called the carbon family. Carbon is the only nonmetal in family 14. You'll notice silicon and germanium are semi-metals, and tin and lead are metals. Okay. Um, but basically what we want to look at is their similarities. Remember, elements in the same family are going to have similar characteristics or attributes. Carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, and lead all have four valence electrons. And we're a little bit ahead of ourselves, but this is a super important concept that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about. What that means is in their outer shell, each of these have just four electrons. Now there's a rule called the octet rule that says that elements or atoms want to have eight electrons in their outer shell. That's how they're complete, they're satisfied. So if they have four, that means that they have, they need four more. And so elements in this family, in the carbon family, will gain, lose, or share electrons when they react with other elements. And we'll really see this a lot when we talk about chemical bonding and ionic and covalent bonds. So carbon family is very important because they're the only family that has four valence electrons um, in their outer shell. And so that's the first one. Family 15, we look at, is group 15 or family 15. This is called the nitrogen family. Um, this contains two nonmetals. We have the nitrogen, nitrogen, 
Uh, nitrogen is really important. Nitrogen is the most prevalent gas in our atmosphere. It makes up uh, a huge portion. I, I believe, if I remember correctly, about 80% of our atmosphere is made of nitrogen. Um, phosphorus, another really, really important element, very important to our bodies, to the function of our muscles. Um, then we have two semi-metals, arsenic and antimony. Arsenic is used in rat poison. Um, antimony it has other uses. And then bismuth, which is a metal. Now notice the family 15, these have five valence electrons. You'll start to see a pattern here. Okay, and they usually gain or share three electrons because remember if they have five in their outer shell, then they have an availability. Remember octet rule, they want eight. So five plus three gives us eight. So they will share or gain three electrons when they react, react with other elements. Next group is the oxygen family. That's in family 16. The oxygen family contains three nonmetals. The nonmetals are oxygen, of course, very, very important because oxygen is what we need to breathe. Sulfur, another very prevalent nonmetal, and we find this a lot in the Earth's crust, and selenium. And then in this family, there's two examples of the semimetals, tellurium and polonium. These elements have six valence electrons, and because they have six valence electrons, these usually gain or share two electrons, because six plus two would be eight, and remember, they want to fill their outer energy level with eight electrons. Okay, So these are elements that react pretty heavily with other elements. You'll see this, for example, oxygen reacts with iron. Right? Remember, Fe plus O gives us iron oxide or rust. Right? So we start to see already how these kind of interact and how their place on the periodic table can help us to understand them better. Then we have family 17, a very important family. Family 17 is the halogens. That's the name that we're going to hear for these fam this family. They are very reactive. Atoms of these have seven valence electrons, which means they only have one space available for another electron to complete their outer shell. So these easily form compounds by sharing or gaining one electron. Now, the four nonmetals in this group are fluorine. Okay, you ever have fluoride <laughs> help protect your teeth? Chlorine, used as it's a noxious gas. It's also used to clean our pools. Okay, bromine, which we'll learn about a little bit. It's one of the uh, two substances on the periodic table that is liquid at uh, room temperature. And iodine. And then astatine is another element here in the halogen family, which is a semi metal. Well, these are all nonmetals. The last group of nonmetals is called the noble gas family, also known as the inert gas family. It's family 18. They have eight valence electrons. Now think about it. The goal of every atom is to get to eight valence electrons. The noble gases already have that. So these are called inert okay, gases because they don't orderly form, ordinarily form compounds. The atoms of inert gases don't gain, lose, or share electrons normally because they've already got their outer shell satisfied. They don't need an electron. And so they tend to be very, very, very um, non-reactive. Notice that there are six of them, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. You'll notice helium, of course, we use in helium balloons. Um, helium is used in weather balloons as well. They used to use hydrogen. And the reason why they went away from using hydrogen is we saw what happened in the Hindenburg, okay, is when you have hydrogen, a very <laughs> explosive and flammable gas, and it ignites, you have a big, big, big uh, problem. And so the noble gases are non reactive, and we see these a lot. Neon and argon and krypton are all used in lighting, um, neon lights, okay, even xenon as well. So we use those a lot because they're non reactive, they're not going to react with the elements. Um, electricity producing those lights. So that's the inert or the noble gas family. A couple of little things real quickly. Hydrogen, uh, which sits all the way by itself um, in the, the far left corner of the periodic table, this one doesn't, it's a non-metal. And so hydrogen also gets categorized as a non-metal. It is not considered a part of family one. It is not an alkali metal because it differs very much from the other elements around it. It really can't be grouped into a family. And so hydrogen kind of sits by itself up on the far left side of the periodic table. Um, and its attributes and qualities are very unique 
uh, make hydrogen a very, very valuable element, primarily because we see hydrogen in water, okay? And so, um, and many, many other substances that we are very important and useful. So we'll learn about that more. The last group I wanna just real quickly talk about are what are called the semi-metals. If you look on the periodic table, you'll always find this little zigzag that cuts between the metals on the left and the non-metals on the right. And that little zigzag we call the semi-metals, the semi-metals. They're also known as the metalloids. That's another name you'll sometimes see, okay? Um, semi-metals have the properties of metals and the properties of non-metals. So they kind of are a split. For instance, um, all of them are solids at room temperature, okay, which we see in the metals, not so much in the non-metals. But they're also brittle, hard, and somewhat reactive. So they're not really reactive like the non-metals we looked at. They're not um, you know, malleable and ductile like we see in the metals. So there's a variety. They also have the ability to conduct electric currents, specifically when we talk about what are called semiconductors. See this ant up here in his mouth, he has a computer chip. Computer chip is a semiconductor. It's made out of um, silicon, the major element that's used to make this computer chip. And the silicon uh, has the ability to conduct electric currents at very specific conditions. And so it really allows us the ability in a computer to turn on electrical current on and off based upon the conditions, the heat, the electricity that we send along that motherboard. And so semiconductors, without them, we would not have any ability to have computers. Um, and especially now that we can make computers so incredibly small, um, computers in our phones and, and in our cars and um, you know our watches, everything. So semi-metals are a really, really important balance between the metals and the non-metals. That's the end of WSQ 16. You watched it. I hope you took good notes. Hope this has given you a good survey and overview of the non-metals, the inert gases, and the semi-metals. And I'll see you in class. We'll talk more about it. Bye. Yes, it is time for another WSQ. WSQ. It's time. It's time. You know it is time.